Welcome back to Pocket Rock. Hey, where are you going? It's just math. Don't run away. Hey, hey. Oh, well. Okay, today we are doing conjugates. What is that? If you had x plus 4, the conjugate of that looks exactly, the parentheses looks exactly the same, except the sign is different. So we're going to have x and 4, but instead of a plus sign, we'll have a minus sign. So conjugates look the same, except the signs are different. Now, when you multiply conjugates out, if you multiply this out, you get x squared. If you FOIL it out, minus 4x plus 4x minus 16. When you multiply conjugates out, the middle term cancels and you're only left with the difference of two squares. So anytime you multiply conjugates, you are going to get the square of this term and this term. See, the square of x is x squared. The square of 4, 16. And then the middle sign will always be a subtraction sign for when you multiply conjugates together because you have a positive times a negative. So this is what happens when you multiply conjugates together. All right, so now let's look at 8b6. These two things are conjugates of the other. This is a conjugate of that. This is a conjugate of this. So they are conjugates of each other and they want you to multiply this out, which in this case you're gonna FOIL it, okay? This times this, this times this. 6 times 6, 36. 6 times a positive, 3 out of the fifth, 18 i to the fifth. Now, this times this, this times this. I'm not going to worry about uh, substituting anything in for i squares at this point. A negative 3 out of the fifth times a positive 6 is a negative 18 i to the fifth. Then a negative 3 out of the fifth times a positive 3 out of the fifth is a negative 9, numbers to numbers. i to the fifth times i to the fifth is i to the tenth. Your middle terms cancel. Now I'm left with 36 minus 9i to the tenth. This is where we will now substitute um, a negative 1 in for i squares. So basically, i to the tenth, I'm just going to write it out longhand is i squared times i squared times i squared should be five of these. One, two, three, four, five. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Because when you're multiplying, you add your exponents. So this would be like 36 minus nine times negative one should be five of these. One, two, three, four, five. A negative times a negative is a positive. Times a negative is a negative times another negative is a positive, times a negative is a negative. If you have an odd number of these, you should end up with a negative. So it would be, a, the, all of this multiplied together is negative one times nine. So this would be 36 minus nine times negative one. Now you have a negative nine and a negative one, which will become a positive. Now add those together, 45. Seems very strange to multiply these two parentheses to get a whole number of 45. When you have an i in your parentheses and you multiply conjugates, your i's will go away because you end up with squaring these and then you can replace it with negative one. You will see why conjugates are important here in just a minute, why it's important for the i's to go away. Same here, look at 8b8. When you multiply these conjugates, your radical is going to go away, okay? This will be important here in a minute. So again, these are conjugates. They look exactly alike, except the signs are different. Now we're going to multiply these together, FOIL them out. Four times four, 16. Four times a positive five square root of two will be a positive 20 square root of two. Negative five square root of two times a positive four is a negative 20 square root of two. A negative 5 square root of 2 times a positive 5 square root of 2 is a negative 25 square root of 4. Numbers to numbers, radicals to radicals. Your middle terms go away. They should when you multiply conjugates. Then you have 16 minus 25. I'm going to go ahead and simplify square root of 4, which is just 2. So now you have 16, 25 times 2, minus 50. 
16 minus 50, that would be a negative 34, I believe. 4 plus 6, 3 and 4 is 5, yes. Negative 34. So do you see how your radical went away? When you multiply, when you have conjugates where you have um, a number and a radical, your radicals will go away. They should go away. Because if you look at 8a14, you now have this problem. Why do we learn conjugates? Where are conjugates useful? In math, remember you cannot have a radical in the denominator. Here, it is not enough just to multiply everything by square root of 8. Because if you notice, when you distribute, you will still have 8 times square root of 8. You will still have a radical in your denominator if you just multiply by only square root of 8. When you have a number added or subtracted to a radical, this is where you use the conjugate. Before now, you only had a radical like this in the denominator. Now you have a number added or subtracted to a radical, and here is where you use the conjugate to get rid of the radical. So we multiply by the conjugate of this. The conjugate of that looks exactly the same, except the sign is different. The numbers and the radicals are the same. Okay, I can put this in parentheses. Whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. If I'm going to multiply the denominator by the conjugate, I have to multiply the numerator by the conjugate. Now, I'm just multiplying fractions. Numerator to numerator, denominator to denominator. In the numerator, that 8 gets distributed. 8 times 8, 64. 8 times a positive square root of 8 would be a positive 8 square root of 8. Now, we have to FOIL out the denominator. These are conjugates. When you multiply conjugates together, your middle term should cancel. Basically, you are squaring the first term and you are squaring the last term with a subtraction sign in the middle. Okay? If I multiply it out, 8 times 8, 60, 64, squaring the first term. Then the next term would be 8 square root of 8. The next one would be 8 square root of 8, but negative, so those cancel. They should. Then a negative times a positive is a negative, and square root of 8 times square root of 8 should just be 8, but I'm going to go ahead and write it as square root of 64. Now let's we'll see, is there anything we can simplify in the numerator? No, I can't combine a number to a radical. So I'm just going to rewrite the numerator. In the denominator, those canceled. I have 64 minus square root of 64 is 8. Okay. I now I'm going to combine my numbers in the denominator. 64 plus 8, square root of 8. 64 minus 8, 56. Just make sure I did that right. That should be 64. Okay, now you look to see, can I reduce my whole numbers by the same thing? Yes, I can reduce each one of these numbers by 8. So if I reduce 64 by 8, that would be 8. Dividing this by 8 would be just 1 square root of 8, and you don't have to write the 1. All over, dividing this by 8 would be 7. And this would be your final answer. You cannot simplify it any more than that. Okay, I only thought this was a simplified answer. It's not. So the other thing that you look for is can you simplify your radical? Yes, that can be simplified. Square root of 8 can be broken down into square root of 4 times square root of 2 because this is a perfect square. So then that would become 8 plus 2. Square root of 4 is 2 and then you still have a square root of 2 all over 7. So always look to see can you reduce the whole numbers and you, can you simplify the radical. This is the final answer because I cannot reduce these numbers anymore either. Okay, let's look at 8b16. You have i in the denominator and a radical. In the world of math, you cannot have a radical in the de denominator, nor can you have an i in the denominator. The way you get rid of imaginary numbers or radicals in the denominator is by multiplying by the conjugate. So anytime you have an i in the denominator, use the conjugate. Anytime you have a radical in the denominator, use the conjugate. It will get the i's and the radicals to go away. Remember, the conjugate looks exactly like this, except the opposite sign. 
So the conjugate would be 2i minus i square root of 3. If you want to put everything in parentheses to help you, that's okay. If you multiply the denominator by the conjugate, you have to also multiply the numerator by the conjugate. Okay, now it's just a matter of multiplying fractions. So in the numerator, you have to distribute this 5i to everything. Okay, I'm going to come down here to this next step. When I distribute 5i, 5i times 2i, 10i squared. Numbers to numbers, letters to letters. Minus 5i times that would be 5i squared, square root of 3. Numbers to numbers, letters to letters, radicals to radicals. It's like there's a 1 in front of here. So 5 times 1 is 5. There's no radicals here to multiply to the square root of 3. Okay, now in the denominator, I am going to do this one the long way, and the next problem I'm going to do the shortcut way. When you multiply conjugates, your middle terms cancel. So basically you would have square this term, square this term, and then put a subtraction sign in the middle. But let's go ahead and foil this out. 2i times 2i, 4i squared. 2i times a negative i square root of 3 will be a negative 2i squared square root of 3. Then this one will be the same thing but a positive 2i square root of 3 because those terms should cancel. Now you have a positive times a negative, which is a negative i squared, square root of 9. Those cancel. Now, everywhere we see an i squared, we are putting a negative 1. Right here, there's a negative 1. Right here, there's a negative 1. Right here, there's a negative 1. Negative 1. Okay, so let's rewrite this. So this would be 10 times negative 1, which is negative 10. This is going to make this whole thing negative, and then this is a negative. Negative, negative, now it becomes a positive 5 square root of 3. Negative 5 times a negative 1 is a positive 5. Okay, that's our numerator, then our denominator. 4 times negative 1, negative 4. These terms canceled. Negative 1, so here we have negative square root of 9 is just 3. That negative i squared got replaced with this negative 1. Remember the i's should go away in the denominator. We should not have any i's. In the numerator I cannot combine these two terms. I can't combine numbers to radicals. Negative 4 minus 3, I'm in debt 4, I'm in debt 3 more, negative 7. Okay. I cannot reduce any of my numbers by anything, and I cannot simplify this radical. The one thing I am going to do is I'm going to reduce everything by a negative 1. I'm going to pull this negative out so it cancels with this, okay? Basically, I am factoring a negative 1 out of the top. So if I factor a negative 1 out of the top, I will get a 10 minus 5 square root of 3. If I went back and distributed it, I would get a negative 10 and then a plus. And then I would have a negative 7. So this negative cancels with that negative. So basically I should have 10 minus 5 square root of 3 all over 7. It just doesn't look very pleasant with all those negatives out in front. Okay. I've made a mistake in this problem that I've noticed. So I'm just going to go back and correct it from my mistake so you guys can see I'm not perfect. So this is not the correct answer, so I'm just going to erase this. So I missed a sign to show you how easy it is to miss a sign. Up here, I have a negative, and then the i squared would be negative 1. So essentially, if I, if I erase it and write it better, negative 1. That i squared became negative 1, I have a negative in front. A negative times a negative is a positive. So jump down to here, this should have been a positive sign. Square root of 9 is 3, so that is all still good. So now my denominator became negative 4 plus 3, so this should have been a negative 1. Okay, I still can factor out a negative like I was doing before. So I factor out a negative 1 from the numerator, which would leave me a 10 minus 5 square root of 3. Because it's generally not good to leave your negative 1 in the denominator like that. 
all over negative 1. Now that negative 1 and that negative 1 cancels and you just have 10 minus 5 square root of 3. That's how easy it is to miss a negative okay, sign. Okay, let's look at 8b15. Okay, we have this and we have a radical on the bottom. So we have a radical that's being added to a number. When you have a number, plus or minus with a radical, you use the conjugate for it to go away. Okay, so the conjugate of the denominator. These two things, yes, are conjugate, but I need to multiply this by the conjugate. It's the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate of this looks exactly the same except the opposite sign. Okay, we want the conjugate of the denominator. Whatever we do the denominator, we have to multiply the same thing by the numerator. I'm going to put everything in parentheses because it reminds me I am multiplying. Okay, so let's FOIL out the numerator. You will not have terms that cancel on the numerator. Okay, only when you are multiplying by opposite signs do you have terms cancel out. So be careful when you FOIL this out. When you FOIL this out, you will not have anything that cancels. 3x times 3x, 9x squared. 3x times square root of 2 would be plus 3x square root of 2. This would be plus 3x square root of 2. Now your last terms, positive square root of 2 times a positive square root of 2 would be a positive square root of 4. That's everything in the numerator. Now I'm going to do the quick way of the denominator. Denominator, you square both of these with a subtraction sign in the middle. So if I square 3x, 3x times 3x, 9x squared. My middle terms will cancel and then I have a negative times a positive which is a negative. Square this one, square root of 2 times square root of 2, square root of 4. Okay, that's the shortcut way. In the numerator, what will combine? Nothing combines with my 9x squared. I have a 3x plus a 3x. I have 3x of these plus 3x of those, which is plus 6x of those. And then plus square root of 4, square root of 4 is 2. Okay, 9x squared minus square root of 4 is 2. Now I'm going to look to see, can anything combine? 9x squared cannot combine with this, and it cannot combine with the whole numbers. A 9x squared cannot combine with the whole numbers. I cannot reduce all my whole numbers by anything. We're looking at 9, 6, 2, 2, and 9. Those all don't simplify by anything. I cannot simplify my radical. There's nothing else I can do. I do not have a radical or an imaginary number in the denominator, so my denominator is safe. I can have an x squared in the denominator. I just cannot have a radical or an i. So I am good. So that is as simplified as this would go.